Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. In today's video, we're gonna be replacing a failed six inch corrugated drain system. Now, as you can see here, the pipe just daylights at the end of the discharge and they just have it laying on the ground. So the pitch of this pipe is already incorrect here. And I speculate the reason why they did it this way is because they didn't wanna to have to cut through any more tree roots to properly lay that pipe. So we're gonna be removing that and we're gonna be laying our new corrugated drain line the proper way. Now, take a look at this. They have these 12 by 12 catch basins below both of these gutter downspouts and they have these leaf filter grates on there. Now these leaf filter grates, they do work, but they do also let a lot of the water go. And if too many leaves cover this, then it creates a seal over it and it does not allow water to actually get down into the basin. So if you do have those or come across them, you have to make sure that you keep them clean and you keep the leaves off of them. Now, the other thing that we're going to be doing here is we're going to be doing some work on this retaining wall at the end we need to put a drain because all the water from this hill and from this trench drains off and it starts to flood into that office building now there is actually a french drain behind this retaining wall and i'm actually looking down one of the clean outs for it here and we pulled all that trash out of there so people were just kind of throwing their trash down in there so we went ahead and we cleaned that out for them and we actually found the discharge end to that French drain right here. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna open this all up and we are going to put our drain below this French drain discharge. So if any water comes out of here, it'll go into our drain. Now they do have geotextile filter fabric around this. They used limestone for their aggregate and the pipe that they used is called A2000 sewer and drain pipe. So it's a corrugated PVC pipe. So it's got corrugations on the outside and it's smooth on the inside. So it's kind of like a dual wall pipe. And, but it's made out of PVC though. It's not made out of HDPE. So it's kind of an interesting pipe. But as you can see here, that fabric kept the pipe pretty clean on the inside and it also kept that stone clean. That's why we always preach to use fabric because the fabric acts as a soil separator and it keeps the sand and dirt from migrating back into the stone and clogging the voids in the stone and ultimately getting into your pipe and clogging your pipe. So we always preach to use a good geotextile filter fabric, a non-woven one. And this is a perfect example of why we always preach that. Now this A2000 sewer pipe is a little different. It has slits on either side of it and that's how the water is supposed to get into it. Now it is kind of interesting because if you saw when we look down that pipe, there's like another piece of PVC pipe that's like pushed into it. And I don't know why the installers did that. The only thing that we could think is they did that to stake the pipe into the ground, but we definitely would not recommend doing anything like this. It doesn't make any sense to do that. So once that pipe is covered with stone and it's sealed, it's wrapped up with the geotextile filter fabric, that pipe is not going anywhere. It's not gonna move. So in this portion of the job here, we actually have to go underneath this sidewalk. Now, whoever installed this drain, they actually already cut the sidewalk in this place to run their drain line under it. So we actually didn't even have to cut the sidewalk. All we did was just go get the, the jack out of the truck and we dug underneath the sidewalk a little bit. And then as you can see, we're just jacking that piece of sidewalk up so we can remove that piece of cement and just get it out the way. And then once we're done installing our new drain line, we will go ahead and just lay that piece of cement back into where the sidewalk went. So one of the best parts about ripping up a failed system is getting to see the failure points in it and why it failed. Take a look at this four inch corrugated drain tile. So the pipe itself is not in bad condition. It's not crushed or anything like that. I mean, obviously it's broken where we took it out of the ground, but it is packed full of debris. And the reason for this is because it was not properly pitched. Whenever you lay any kind of drainage pipe, it needs to have proper slope on it. It doesn't matter if it's PVC, corrugated, dual wall, RCP, whatever kind of pipe you're laying, it needs to have the correct pitch. And you also need to use the correct fittings and you need to size that pipe correctly. So this system was installed with multiple bellies throughout the line in different areas, which were holding debris, creating clogs, and they also used fittings improperly. Take a look at this. This is called a blind inlet tee. So this blind inlet tee is meant to act as both a T fitting or a 90 degree elbow for six inch pipe. 
The problem with using this for a 90 degree elbow is debris will actually circulate backwards into the T fitting where the cap is to create that 90. And you can see all the root intrusion here because this cap is not sealed. So roots can easily grow in there as well. There was no tile tape used on this system either. So we had massive root intrusion at all the joints. So that was another failure point here. But the problem with these blind inlets, whenever you use them as a 90 degree elbow, a lot of times a clog will slowly generate in this. And we have a video showing that. I'll go ahead and I'll link that in the description below so you can take a look at that because I explain a little bit more in depth with these blind inlet tees. We would never use them for a 90 degree elbow. We only would use them as a clean out tee fitting. So this was the first day on the job. We actually are calling it quits now. We put our caution tape up over the doors. We put our cones out and we caution the area off. That way nobody walks back here when they go take a break, a lunch break or anything like that. So then we're gonna be starting this job up again on the second day. Second day on the job and we got the old system completely removed. As you can see, the pipe is in still, it's still in good condition. I mean, it hasn't collapsed anywhere. It hasn't crushed down. The only problem with this system was it wasn't laid properly. They didn't lay it with pitch. They just dug a trench and they threw the pipe in there and it was wavy. So that's why this system failed. That and there was no tile tape around the joints. So we did have a lot of root intrusion. But basically this was old agriculture grade corrugated pipe. So what we're gonna be replacing it with is a heavy duty corrugated pipe. The corrugated pipe that we use I mean, you know, it all looks the same in videos and photos, guys. I don't know what to tell you. You got to get your hands on this pipe and feel it, or you have to look on the pipe and it needs to say heavy duty on the pipe. If that pipe doesn't say heavy duty, or if it doesn't say HD, then it's not a high quality pipe. It's a low grade pipe. That pipe has to say heavy duty on it. So what we're going to be replacing it with is a heavy duty sidewalled pipe and we're obviously going to be laying that pipe correctly. No bellies, only proper pitch, all proper connections. We're not going to use a blind inlet tee as a 90 degree elbow. We're going to use an actual HDPE 90 degree elbow, six inch to make our 90 degree turns. That's what you want to do. You want to use the proper fittings and connections and a high quality pipe and install it with a downhill pitch. Always try to get a quarter bubble if you can. If you can't get a quarter bubble because it's just too flat of an area you're working in or you're going through a hill, then you need to make sure that pipe is at least level. It cannot be backflowed anywhere. That is the trick. But ideally, you want a quarter bubble every 10 feet if you can get it. And if you can get more than a quarter bubble, especially on corrugated, then go for it. So you can see here, we're hooking up our six inch Y connection. Whenever we tie in a lateral line for a downspout, we always use a Y connection. That downspout is gonna be giving off water at a high rate of speed. And the downspout is also gonna be moving debris in it, especially that five by four gutter downspout over there. That pretty much is a six inch gutter downspout. So we have to hook directly into that with a six inch corrugated line or six inch PVC line, whichever it is that we're installing. And there's no, there's not gonna be a leaf filter on that one. Now the three by four gutter downspout, we can put a leaf filter on that one. So we don't have to worry about debris getting into the system at that point. But back here on the super downspout, debris will be entering the system. So we wanna keep the flow rate up on that water so it can push this debris through the line so we do not get a clog. When you're working with a larger pipe, such as six inch or bigger, it is advised to have more than one man working on this pipe. It's a lot easier. When you work with this pipe by yourself, it takes a lot longer time to stretch the roll out and start installing it. It's a lot easier if you have two or three men working with larger diameter drain pipe. But we have our pipe laid, everything is pitched correctly the way we want it. We have it going under all the sprinkler and irrigation lines and wires. And you can see, look at all of these internet lines that we had to avoid. I mean, it was a nightmare back there. But this is one of the reasons why we love corrugated pipe. Look how we can just snake this pipe through all of these obstacles. In this situation, if we were installing PVC pipe, this job would have been a lot more labor intensive and it would have taken us a lot longer to install because our trenches would have had to be a lot straighter 
and the obstacles that we had to snake this pipe through and go around, it would have been a lot harder. We would have had to use a lot of joints for that PVC pipe to get it past all of these obstacles. And that's a problem. The more joints you have in a system, the more failure points you have. Whenever you can stretch out one long length of pipe like this, and you can get a good 100 foot run with no joints, that is less failure points. Every single joint you have on a drainage system that's going past trees and shrubs and roots, every single joint could be compromised from tree roots. Every single one has a chance of roots getting into it. And roots are the number one way to take out a drainage system. Once the roots get in there, it starts to begin a backup, especially if there's debris going through the system. And I mean, the roots themselves over time can clog a system. But take a look at this. We have a iron grate, a ductile iron grate left over from another job. So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is just make a custom concrete catch basin. So we want that grate right below where that French drain from that retaining wall is gonna dump in. And I have our main line pipe just right below it. So we're gonna be using some plywood here to make a box to form it and then that box, that form will go down into the hole and then we will pour our concrete underneath the form and then around the form. That way it creates a concrete box around this. And then we will come back roughly after like 30, 40 days when that concrete is fully cured and we will cut the wood out of the, out of the concrete box and we'll remove the wood and then it'll just be a solid concrete catch basin. So that's how we do it. So the final step to this project is going to be mixing our concrete and pouring it underneath and around our wooden form. And then that just about does it for this job. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. It really supports us. It supports the channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. And if you need storm drainage work, any kind of exterior drainage work in the Tampa Bay area, Give Stormwater Drainage Solutions a call at 813-614-3456 or visit us at our website at stormwaterdrainagesolutions.com. If it's drainage pipe, we install it. Whether it's PVC, corrugated, dual wall, RCP, we install it all. Give us a call.